rotation, especially internal rotation, is the fundamental movement of the hip joint. The amount of internal rotation that you possess gives a good indication of the available workspace that you have in your hip joint. And you can think of the available capsular workspace as the amount of movement potential that you possess. So limited rotation of the hips generally means limited capsular workspace, which then also means limited movement capacity that you have in your hips. The way that the femur head sits in the acetabulum to form the hip joint means that for any linear movement such as flexion, extension, abduction, there's some amount of rotation that has to occur at the hip joint to allow for those linear planes of motion. So the more rotation that you possess, the more capacity that you have to go into those linear movements. Unfortunately, very few of us think about hip rotation, much less actively train it. So in this short video, I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can assess the rotational capacity in your hip joints. So we'll look first at what are called capsule CARS. CARS is an acronym that stands for Controlled Articular Rotations, and capsule just refers to the joint capsule itself. So in the capsule CARS, we'll have the hip in a certain position, and then we'll look on just um, our ability to rotate the hip internally and externally in that position. We'll also be doing some global hip cars, and the global hip cars include not only the rotational capacity of the hip, but also the linear movements such as flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction. To start, let's come down to a supine position or laying down on your back. So bend your right leg up and bring your right knee stacked over your right hip. Have your right shin parallel to the ground. So we're creating this 90 degree angle in the leg. And just place your, your hands on that right thigh. Create a little bit of tension pressing the right thigh into the hands. So right now we're in about we're in 90 degrees of hip flexion in this right hip. We're gonna look at your ability to internally and externally rotate your hip at, at this 90 degrees of hip flexion. So an internal rotation of the hip will mean a turning of the thigh in, which means your right ankle will move to the right side. Okay, so that is internal rotation, and then if we sweep back to the center, and then if we externally rotate the right hip, that's mean a turning of the right thigh out, then your right foot will appear to the left. Okay, so it might be a little bit counterintuitive that when we internally rotate the right hip, the foot pushes to the outside of the body, and when we externally rotate, it kind of comes more to the inside of the body. Okay, so let's do that a couple more times. Your hands here are just to prevent any lateral or side-to-side -side movement in the right thigh. And I'll show this from a different angle in a moment. So again, internal rotation, you can think of this thigh bone or right femur bone turning in. And then an external rotation turning out of the right thigh, right femur bone in the hip socket. And let me show from a different angle. Okay, so from here, I've got my right knee over my right hip. Internal rotation here is a turning in of the right thigh, and my right foot will uh, turn out. You know, I can think of pushing out through the pinky toe side of my right foot. And then an external rotation is going to be more of a pushing forward through the big toe side of my foot. And what you don't want to see is coming into internal rotation like a turning any change in the position of the thigh bone or the femur relative to the hip socket so you know any lateral side to side movement here we're looking at purely rotation okay so just go back and forth a couple more times internally rotating that right hip and then also make sure that when you come into internal rotation that you aren't crunching up the right side of your waist or hiking that right hip up so again, if we're assessing your hips availability to rotate, we want to make sure that other body parts are not contributing to that movement. We want to stay strict, just looking at rotation. Okay, so let's all come into internal rotation of that right hip one more time. Freeze here and actively try to fight for a little bit more. So if you can visualize your thigh bone, your femur bone sitting there in the hip socket, try to squeeze out or wring out a little bit more internal rotation. 
Okay, and hold there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's swing back through the center and come into external rotation. And again, don't let the right thigh move out to the right side. Try to keep more right knee over your right hip. Okay, max out external rotation. And then actively try to squeeze out or wring out a bit more rotation there in that right hip. Okay, and we're going to hold there for five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's come on out of that. Place the right foot down. Let's assess the left hip. So again, bring your left knee over your left hip. Left shin parallel to the ground. So you're creating this 90 degree angle and you could place your hands to your left thigh just to create a little bit of tension there so you're keeping a bit of hip flexion actively. And let's come into internal rotation. Remember with internal rotation, the thigh turns in, the foot moves to the left. So you're pressing out through the pinky toe side of the foot. And then with external rotation, turning the left thigh out. And you're going to see the big toe side of your left foot. And just continue to turn back and forth, doing a few capsule cars. These are also called axial rotations. Again, restrain any side to side or lateral movement in the thigh. We're strictly looking at rotation. Okay, I'm just going to show from a different angle so you can see kind of the back side how when I'm here with internal rotation, pushing out towards the pinky toe side of my left foot. Again, be careful not to cheat by hiking that left hip up or shrinking on the left side of your waist. And let's externally rotate. And a few more times, the internally rotate and externally rotate continue let's come back to internal rotation so remember that's pushing out through the pinky toe side of the left foot again just check that you aren't shrinking on the left side of the waist okay let's just hold here again for about a five count and really actively thinking of trying to and like squeeze out as much rotation in that left hip as you can we're gonna hold there might be some cramping on that outer hip five four three two one come into external rotation again don't let the left thigh move too far to the left still think of left knee over left hip okay come to your end range of external rotation turn the left hip out and let's just hold there five four three, two, and one. Step that left foot down. Okay, so that's one way of looking at capsule cars, the rotational capacity there when the foot is kind of up in the air, so a little bit more open chain position. Another way to work on capsule cars of the hips is in a position called bear sit. I'm gonna sit down. And then bear sit, you're in quite a bit of hip abduction as well as hip flexion. So you're going to take, take your legs wide. If you feel a lot of pinching in the front of the hips, you could definitely elevate yourself on some blocks or cushions. I'm just going to take a couple blocks here. I'm going to stay on my blocks for the purposes of this video. Okay, so come into as much hip abduction as you can. That's when the legs are separated or moved to the outsides, the lateral sides of the body. Keep your hands behind. Okay, so if we're looking at capsule cars here, remember this is in this uh, case, the feet are fixed on the ground. So as before, when we had the foot was in the air and we we're pivoting the hip in internal and external rotations, so these are just somewhat different. Okay, so let's work on the right hip. So internal rotation here, the right knee is going to turn like forward and down towards the ground. And you want to keep your right sitting bone heavy on the ground or on your blocks because once we start to lift that right sitting bone up, the pelvis is getting involved and we're doing something more than just strictly rotation of the hip joint itself. Okay, so a couple other things to note here. You could keep the ankle dorsiflexed as you come into internal rotation. You could also plantar flex the ankle, so more of a pointed ankle, and pivot onto the big toe side of the foot. You might have to play around with a couple different options, especially if you feel any, any medial knee pain. Okay, so here we go. Let's internally rotate that right hip. And again, if this is a position that's unusual or new to you, you may just be about here and that's all you got. And that's fine. 
Okay, so let's again come into internal rotation. Be really strict about keeping that right sitting bone down. And then let's externally rotate and push back out. And continue, internally rotate, turn in, and externally rotate, push back out. Let's do a few more. Internally rotate, and again, if this is a movement that's new to you, it might feel weird or unusual, but as you practice it more, it's gonna be a bit more familiar. I'm in, as with anything else. And externally rotate back out. Let's go two more times, internally rotate. At the end, try to fight for a little bit more. Externally rotate, push back out. Last one, internally rotate. Again, stay here. You have turning that thigh bone there in the hip socket. And externally rotate back out. Okay, let's get the left hip. Okay, so sit up tall. Internally rotate. I've got much less internal rotation on this left hip than my right and externally rotate back out. Again, if knee pain or feels weird, you can play around with the position of your ankle, more dorsiflex, you're gonna stay more on the heel, or plantar flex, foot is more kind of flat on the ground. Okay. And continue, just keep that left sitting bone down. Again, a couple more times. It's grooving out some rotation here in the hips. Another thing to consider if you do feel some knee pain when you come into internal rotation is to keep some tension in your hamstrings. So as you do your capsule cars, you can also think about pulling your left heel back towards your butt. So isometrically contract your hamstrings a bit. That might bring you know, some strength, some tension there to the back of the knee joint, which may kind of help your knee feel safer. So let's come into internal rotation one last time. Again, freeze here. Actively think of turning that hip in slightly more. Okay. And let's come on up. Good. So those two positions, there's many other positions, like I said, like your hip joint should be able to rotate in a variety of different positions of the hip joint itself. But those are two very simple, very common positions um, that you can practice your capsule cars in on your back or from a bare sit position. So let's move on to some actual global hip car movements. We're gonna start from a side lying position. So I want you to lie down on your left side. And I'm gonna, just gonna use my blocks here. One's gonna be a pillow. Okay, so lying down on the left side. I have my right hip stacked over my left and my right shoulder stacked over my left shoulder. From here, I want you to interlace your hands, stretch your arms forward, create a bit of tension here of squeezing the hands together and engaging through the arms. So we wanna create a little bit of what's called irradiation or body tension here so that when we're moving our right hip joint through its range of motion, we're trying to prevent other parts of the body from moving as well. So creating a little bit of tension helps us achieve that. So we're going to lift the right leg up, the top leg up a bit. And the whole time, think of keeping the right knee bent at 90 degrees. Okay. And from here, we're going to pull into hip flexion. So bring your right knee towards your right arm. Be very caref careful here not to round your spine. Again, we don't want the spine to contribute to our hip motion. We want it to be purely hip motion. From hip flexion, we're going to open up into hip abduction. So it kind of looks like a frog-like position. And in this spot, be careful not to lean back. So you don't want that right hip falling kind of back behind the left hip. Try to keep the hips as stacked as you can. And from here, internally rotate. So that's going to be turning inward of that right thigh. The right foot will turn, kind of move back behind you. Okay, so that's the internal rotation part. And we're very slowly going to start to lower the right leg down. You can also think of slightly taking it back behind you for hip extension. But again, just be careful of your spine contributing to any movement here. Often we'll arch or extend through the low back in order to kick the right leg further back. Don't do that here. We want to keep it strict to hip motion only. All right, so let's finish up this round, come back to the starting position. We're going to continue with the hip cars in the same direction. So slowly come into hip flexion. 
open up into hip abduction. Internally rotate. Use that right glute to pull the right leg back slightly, but don't arch through the low back. Okay, let's get one more of this direction. So coming into hip flexion, hip abduction. Internally rotate, slowly lower back down. And just rest for a moment, bring that right leg on top of the right, left leg. We go three rounds in reverse. So lift the right leg up again a bit. So now we're going to pull into hip extension and make this purely a hip motion. So often again we try to use our low back to contribute to hip extension. Don't want to do it here. You should feel that right glute kind of engaging, a little bit of burn there. From hip extension we're going to start to come into hip abduction. So there's a bit of external rotation here as we come back to this like frog-like position. And to finish up the circle, pull the right knee towards the right arm and slowly lower down. Two more times. So in our controlled articular rotations, obviously they're controlled, which means you're meant to go very slow and try to move at an even cadence. Okay, from hip extension, come into hip abduction, externally rotate on your way there. Pull the right knee towards the right arm. Okay, so slow. Again, the slow movement helps us not use momentum. Again, we're actively taking whatever joint we're working on through its active range of motion. One more time up. Come all the way back up. And right knee towards right arm. And rest. Okay, while we're here, I also want to get some hip capsule cars from a sideline position. So we're going to do those in two different ways. The first way, we're going to come back to this frog-like position. So this is hip abduction. So the entire time that we're doing our capsule cars, I want you to think of keeping the same amount of distance between your knees and also keep that right knee bent at 90 degrees. So it's all, this is like the internal rotation part that we incorporated into the global hip cars. So we're going to internally rotate here. Again, the right foot will push a bit behind you. Squeeze for a little bit more internal rotation. And then we're going to come back. Try to get a little bit of external rotation. There's not going to be a whole lot in this position. So anything is kind of pushing forward through the big toe side of your foot and then internally rotate, press back through the pinky toe side of your foot. But again, I'm cueing with the foot, but it's not an ankle movement. It's again, it's originating, of course, at the hip joint. The lower leg follows along with that movement. I externally rotate, not gonna be much here. Internally rotate, might not be much internal rotation here as well. And a couple more times, externally rotate. Internally rotate. And be, just be careful here when you internally rotate, sometimes people will kind of dip that right knee down, or you might see you trying to extend the right knee when you internally rotate. Try to really keep the right knee at 90 degrees. Don't let the distance between the knees change very much. One more time, go into internal rotation. Fight for a little bit more. And let's slowly lower out of that. So if you have a yoga block or something else that you can place between your knees, we're going to do that. So just something that's a few inches, doesn't have to be a yoga block, could be like a rolled up towel. Okay, so we're going to crush that between your knees in the same sideline position as we did for hip cars. So internal rotation of the right hip here looks like this. Again, turning the thigh in, you're going to be pushing up through the pinky toe side of your right foot. And oftentimes when you come into internal rotation here, the hamstrings will try to kind of help out a bit and you'll notice that your knee bends in more. Again, don't do that. Keep it the movement just strict to the hip joint so knee stays at that same 90 degree angle. Let's do a few capsule cars here. So internally rotate. This is a more, more strict internal rotation because you're not really going to get external rotation because your bottom foot's in the way. Okay, a couple more times. Internally rotate for a bit more. Come on down. Two more times. Internally rotate. And back out. One more time. Internally rotate. Let's again hold here at the top. 
Turn the thigh bone in, turn the femur bone there in the hip socket. Hold there. Five, four, three. Make sure you're not shrinking on the right side of the waist. Two, and one. Slowly release down. Okay, let's get those global hip cars for the left hip and then the capsule cars in those two different positions. All right. So laying down on your right side. Left hip is stacked over your right hip, left shoulder over your right shoulder. Interlace your hands, create some tension there in the hands and arms. And be really strict about not getting the spine involved in the hip motion. Okay, so to start, lift the left leg up a bit. I'm gonna pull the left knee towards the left arm. Don't round the low back, don't round the spine. Come into hip abduction. Max out the distance between the knees without kind of falling back in your pelvis. Internally rotate. Thigh is going to turn in. Left foot will start to move behind you. Slowly start to lower the left leg down and back. Again, don't get that spine involved. I'm going to continue this direction two more times. Pull into hip flexion. Open up into hip abduction. Internally rotate. Hip extension. And don't arch into the low back. One more time. Again, controlled articular rotations means moving controlled. <laughs> Slow and even pace or cadence. We're trying to get through into the outer limits of what your current range of motion is here for this left hip joint. Okay. And go ahead and place that left leg down on the right. Rest for a moment. And then we'll get three controlled articular rotations in the opposite direction. Okay, go ahead and lift the left leg up. You're squeezing this left glute. Use the left glute to come into hip extension. Don't arch the way back. And then externally rotate from here. So you're going to pull into external rotation and hip abduction. Left knee drives up. And then drive the left knee towards the left arm. Come back down to the starting point and continue. Hip extension, external rotation, coming into abduction, hip flexion, left knee towards the left arm, the last one. And rest. Let's get those capsule cars here, still from the sideline position, the first one being with the hip and abduction. So come back to this like frog-like position. Again, keep the knee at 90 degrees. Don't let it extend more. Don't let the knee drop down towards the ground. Internally rotate. Thigh turns in, and you're kind of pressing back or into the pinky toe side of the left foot. And we're going to come forward, pressing kind of forward and towards the big toe side of the left foot. Again, there's not going to be really much external rotation there. And come into internal rotation. And external rotate. Keep that hip in abduction. Don't let the legs start to drop. Internally rotate. And externally rotate. A couple more. Internally rotate. External rotate. This time let's stay in internal rotation. Then fight for a little bit more. I think you're trying to squeeze out as much internal rotation as you can get. And lower that left leg down. Ooh, outer hip feels that. So grab your block or whatever you can to create some space between the knees. Okay, and from here, we're going to internally rotate. So now the hips are more in like a 90 degrees of hip flexion position. Okay. Crush the block between your knees. Push up through the pinky toe side of your left foot. And lower the left ankle back down. And continue. So here again, like I said, common compensation is kind of a hiking of that left hip or crunching through the left side of the waist. So you're going to consciously keep that area long. So turning of the thigh bone in and coming back out.
two more times. And at this last time, we're gonna hold there. So come to that end range of your active internal rotation there on that left hip. Stay there, try to fight for a little bit more, even just like a millimeter more, and hold for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come on out. Now let's come on out of that position. So those exercises give you some idea of how much your hips can rotate actively. I suggest practicing hip capsule cars and global hip cars as often as you can. Your hips need rotation, they need movement to maintain uh, their joint health and resilience and longevity. Rotate those hips. And in my next newsletter, you know, it's like, so what if you found out your, well, my hips don't rotate very much. So we'll address that in my next video and my next newsletter about uh, ways that you can actively work to expand ranges of motion, specifically in rotation, if you found that you were lacking.